Introducing Nose to Tail, a podcast where we explore the world of aviation lifecycle solutions, insights, and more. Presented by Jet Midwest. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Nose to Tail podcast. I'm here with Sammy from Etihad Engineering. Nice to see you, Patrick. Nice, nice to, to see you again. again. Appreciate you joining me. Why don't we start with maybe a little background? Mm. How you got your career started and kind of where that's taken you within uh, Etihad. Yeah, so it actually started at school. We had one of the old uh, alumni from school. He came from a company from uh, in aviation and he did a small introduction of what he's doing. And this is when I knew that I'm going to pursue a career in aviation. That's what I did for university. I did my master's degree in aerospace in Manchester. And then I joined Masco, Middle East Airlines in Beirut uh, for a few years. And then I joined Etihad Engineering under the commercial team. And this is where I really found my love for aviation in sales and commercial. Nice. No. So did you start as a young engineer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I started working on the aircraft as an engineer. I started doing my uh, license as well. It was good, uh, very good to have the hands-on on the aircraft. But I discovered that I, I like to do sales. And uh, I stopped doing the, the license and pursued the whole thing on the sales. So did that technical background, has that helped you on the sales side? Oh, definitely. Because the best thing you can have when talking to a customer is that you know what you're talking about. You know what you're trying to sell. If you don't know anything about technicalities, then it is going to be very difficult. And we talk to technical people. You talk to engineers sometimes. You talk to people that do have experience. So if you sound that you're not knowing what you're talking about, you cannot sell anything. That's the thing. So what is it you're doing today at, at Etihad? So uh, I started as a customer focus team in Etihad. Uh, so what I was doing is executing the contract. When the sales guys sells the slot for base maintenance, I will be the one handing the aircraft when it comes to the facility. Before I move to where I am now, one of the biggest projects and the things I'm really proud of during those years is that uh, we did the first 12 years check on A380. Uh, aircraft in the world. We had a huge team of Airbus and it was for a 100 days project. So it, it, I learned a lot about A380s and base maintenance during that time. After this, I moved to AFS sales and now I'm doing the component services sales where we sell services, component services to our customers. So describe for me a little bit about maybe what the of capability. I know previously we discussed you sort of have a lot of variety of component level mm. repairs. Help us understand what that variety looks like and how Etihad integrated that into the aircraft side. Yeah. So let me say one thing about Etihad uh, for whoever doesn't know. Etihad Engineering is an MRO for base maintenance and they do component services, component repairs mainly. So component services started as a support function, as a backshop function to support the base maintenance. In the in recent year, we're trying to grow this uh, and to expand our component services and put Etihad Engineering on the map as a real component services provider on repairs. So the customer can send, we do business with you guys as well. So let me take this example, a Jet Midwest send us their components. So who they are planning to sell it in the region. So they sell it to Etihad Engineering. We do the certification, we do the repair overhaul recertification, we give it fresh tags, and then we can send it to any customer in the region. So many of our customers are doing that. So from a component shop capability, a specific mm. capability, is there one particular or two particular places you have some great expertise that, that people should know about? Um, no, I must say that our capability list is extended to around 12,000 part number, mainly airframe uh, components okay. on both Boeing and Airbus platforms. Uh, most of the platforms actually. Our strong, strong, strong uh, capabilities are on the legacy fleet. 777, 320s, and now 787. Uh, we do have on A380s, we do have on all the Airbus and Boeing actually. Of course, with the support of the OEM, we are always developing new capabilities. So our strategy now is to expand our uh, reach and the partnership with a lot of OEMs in the region. So we are authorized repair station for a couple of OEMs in the region. And this helped us to develop our capability and the portfolio with the customers. So from an aircraft fleet type, 
8380, you've got Boeing and Airbus. Yeah. Uh, competitive products there. Is there maybe some commentary or nuance? Uh, I don't want to say better or worse, right? That would yeah. put you on the spot. But, but maybe is there something special nuanced about each of those products uh, that's either a big challenge or that you really enjoy working with? So yes, as a, as a passenger, I have an opinion and as an engineer, I have another opinion. <laughs> uh, as a, pa a passenger, I would say from Boeing, the 787 is quite comfy in flying and the A380, for example. When you fly long hauls, if you're on the A380, you really don't feel it. But from a maintenance perspective, A380 is a big headache. It consumes the whole hangar slot as a hangar. It consumes a, a lot of manpower. It's really expensive to maintain but it is comfy and passengers do love it. So both are good, both they have good products really competing. And for each travel and for each maintenance activity, everyone will have a favorite. So on the A380, you mentioned that that 12 year check was a hundred days in the hangar. Yeah. That, that's, that's pretty amazing. How many man hours do you think that is? I mean, it's such a big airplane. I remember the first time I was at the ground level in Mojave looking at the ones we had purchased. It just tremendously huge and everything to a different yes. scale and you know how many guys do you put onto a sea chair i guess it's good whatever 12 year check how many guys on a ship so usually it will be uh, two crews two white body crews it depends on if you have a lean configuration or you have to expedite the work but usually it's two white body crew so it, it can be it can be heavy you would think it would be an army of ants you know it, just, yeah just yes just yes yes work, working away like on an anvil exactly yeah that's pretty awesome so you had mentioned early on that that you had some exposure to somebody who was able to give you some inspiration to kind of guide you towards aviation as a career if a young person who's listening today if they're if they're coming up and wondering if this crazy business that we do if this is something i want to be involved in based on what you see in the marketplace what, what's the path that you would suggest somebody potentially go down in order to get into this industry and mm. maybe not into sales because we're all just a little hey. banana you know, and that's <laughs> yes. a different problem but but maybe the industry itself you know uh what what path do you see that really makes sense so the thing is about aviation is that it has an incredible way of standing on its feet again and again. During the crisis, for example, 2008, recently COVID, there's a lot of, and usually aviation is the most sector that gets affected and damaged by, by those crises. And again, it comes back on its feet stronger than ever. Look now after COVID, we even forget that a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we had COVID and we're meeting and, and having big shows. So it gives you the idea that this uh, industry uh, doesn't surrender, doesn't give up. And if they need to uh, pursue career-wise, if I'm going to say career-wise, I think it's better to have some technical knowledge. And if they want to move to commercial, they can. But I believe everyone needs to have a little bit of technical knowledge. They need to know what they're dealing with whether it is airframe or component. As we have people who come up through this industry, I hear people talk about uh, internships and apprenticeships and some mm -hmm. of those things. I certainly, I don't know, I want to call it European model. That's maybe unfair to the rest of the world who, who does the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're the ones that oftentimes have that in the forefront uh, of their minds. And does Etihad do any of those programs? Do they have some programs where they're bringing young people through? Uh, yes. So we have our part one for seven school, training school. We can give all kinds of training. And yes, uh, good you asked. So now we have a new school set up in our facility, a huge one, and they're planning in doing programs of a constant flow of fresh engineers to the, because I've been there and I think you've been as well. Fresh graduate from university, it's like a chicken and egg. So every company you go to, they need experience, but how are you gonna get experience if you're not being employed by a company? So it's good to have a program where they develop their own engineers, a constant flow of fresh, and then complemented by the experienced guys. Very cool. We do that. We're going to do that very soon. So we get lucky enough in this business to be able to travel all over the world. Yeah. And spoiled, actually, that we get to do it. Pretty spoiled. You know, if there's a place that, that you've been that you would go back to, I'd want to know that. And then what's a place you haven't been yet that maybe you're like, boy, I, I, I need to put this on the list. So I did enjoy Thailand, but not for the reasons that everyone uh, think about actually, but I did enjoy Thailand with the food. So for me, I like experiencing food, all right? So when, whenever I travel to a new country, I like to experience their cuisine, street food, their 
this experience. Thailand is not the, the Thai food that you actually eat at home. It's actually much more in that. So I did enjoy it. It was a new experience. But to be fair, every country I traveled for the first time, I really did enjoy and I would like to go back because each country, they have their own uh, tradition, their own food, their own way of life. And I'm currently enjoying Chicago. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna gain yeah. some weight there. I'm, I'm telling well, you. The next time you come to Kansas City, you gotta leave a little spot here. <laughs> yes. Serve some barbecue and, yes. and uh, exactly. get you taken care of. Well, listen, as we wind down our podcast for today, um, is there anything you wanna add or anything that maybe the people in the world maybe need to know about Sammy and, and his aviation uh, experience or, or thoughts in general? Um, yes, I would like to say it might be very stressful aviation. We do work long hours, I would say that. Sometimes we don't have weekends as well, but as long as we enjoy it, because I do really enjoy what I'm doing, and as long as we have passion if, in what we're doing, we actually take it as a, as a just a fun experience. Even with all those long hours, when you have your leg swollen after a show, we still enjoy, we still meet with new people every day, uh, do great connections with you guys as well, deal with very good customers. So I would say it's a very fun, very exciting uh, work, I would say. I, I would definitely agree. I think most everybody here is in the same boat. No matter how long I've been doing this, I absolutely love it and have passion probably more every day. Yeah. Um, and, and for lots of different reasons, right? It, it, like you talk about the growth in your career, going from being a technical person into a completely different field, really, yeah. and dealing with sales and how you apply those. And I'm sure you're going to have something great coming in the future that we'll be looking forward to hearing about. Hopefully. Yeah, Hopefully, absolutely. yes. We can celebrate together. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the Nose to Tail podcast uh, here with Sammy from Etihad. Thank you, uh, Patrick. This is, this is Patrick Krause signing off. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Nose to Tail. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Presented by Jet Midwest. <laughs>